Ex-cons and criminals are begging the state of Michigan to ban landlords from looking at criminal backgrounds. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing and Landlord News. None of us are asking for anything for free. None of us are asking to be handed a home. The only thing we want is the opportunity to earn it, just like everybody else. A home that Tanae Gildia says everyone is deserving of, regardless of their past. And no matter where I apply to live, they're going to tell me no because of what I did 10 years ago. Gildia served four years in prison for using meth. While it was her decision in the past, she says it shouldn't define her life. Although she says getting past the housing criminal background check was a hurdle for her and her daughter, leaving them without a home of their own. How did that make you feel? Not really good. Not only people with money and that haven't been to jail need a house. Everyone needs a house. All right, so I have an interesting article for you today, and it's going over one of those topics I've been talking about a lot lately, and that's the criminal background checks. Now, I talk about it because it's one of the best tools that we have in order to screen our tenants and make sure we're putting the best people possible into our properties. But what they want to do is take our ability to screen tenants away because they say that not only is it you know bad and making it hard for low income people to afford housing or find housing but they say it's racist and I, i'm sick of this stupid argument uh, uh, the argument that oh in order to make these people have an easier time we have to put our money at risk we have to uh lose thousands of dollars and hurt ourselves just so we can help them out. That is so dumb. No business operates like that, okay? No business. And if you do, you're gonna be out of business really, really quickly because those kind of attitudes are just stupid. They go counter to everything that an intelligent person would ever think. So telling me that I can't screen my tenants' backgrounds to make sure I'm not putting criminals or thieves into my property, the only thing that's gonna do is make me not wanna do business at all. Why would I want to operate a rental property if I can't decide the best tenant to put in there? Okay, this is the big flaw in almost all of these government regulations. They think that, oh, well, you know, the landlords, they're just going to just put up with it. They're just going to take it. No, I'm not going to take it. I'm going to take my money and go somewhere else. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, if I own a multifamily building, I'm going to convert it over into a co-op or I'm gonna convert it over into condos and then sell the, the units individually. Or if it's single family rentals, I will just sell it to a uh, owner occupier. I'm not going to operate a rental property in a place that will not allow me to do business as I see fit. It is very, very simple. So even if you think that for some reason, you know, you've got the perfect law, the perfect rule that will make everything work out right, what they seem to find out is that the rules don't work the way that they thought they were going to work. There's always unintended consequences and the landlords, they will always do whatever is in their best interest and they will try to work around the rules or find exceptions to the rules or whatever. And in the worst case scenario, just leave, just not want to be landlords there anymore, which leads to, you know, elevated prices which leads to less housing supply and all the problems that they are trying to get rid of. So before I get into the article, go ahead, hit the like, subscribe button, maybe leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Do you agree with these ex-cons, these criminals who did time in prison? Do you think that landlords should not have the ability to look at the background information of their prospective tenants? Do you think that that is hurting people and keeping them down and out and unable to afford housing and do you even care because i don't okay if you don't want to make it hard to find housing how about not breaking the law huh <laughs> how about not going to prison getting that felony conviction okay you did it to yourself now that doesn't mean that nobody's ever going to rent to you but you're gonna have to prove yourself to a landlord that you are worthy of being able to move into their property. Or there might just be the very, very bottom end of landlords, you know, people who operate in the, the worst ghetto of a city or in, you know, horrible trailer parks. Those might be the only places where you're able to find housing. And that is a consequence of the actions that you took. So maybe you might want to think about being law abiding, <laughs> okay? So that you don't have to face these sort of consequences. 
there are always consequences for our actions. So anyway, let's get into this article and see what it says. This article is coming from WILX.com and it says, Former prisoners call for change in unfair housing laws. People with stable housing are 83% less likely to commit crimes. So they, the first thing that I hate about that title is they say that the housing laws are unfair. No, they're perfectly fair. Okay. They just don't like them. The second thing is they say that people with stable housing are 83% less likely to commit crimes, right? Well, here's my problem with that. Is it correlation or causation? Okay. If a person who is a criminal has stable housing, they're still a criminal. If a person is, yeah, here, here's my, my, my problem, right? The fact that they are a criminal means that they are less likely to have stable housing, regardless of whether people are renting to them or not. So forcing landlords to rent to them wouldn't make this person no longer a criminal. That is a personal decision that has to come from within. So anyway, let's get into the article and see what it says. <clears throat> Lansing, Michigan. None of us are asking for anything for free. None of us are asking to be handed a home, said Tanae Gildea. The only thing we want is the opportunity to earn it, just like everybody else. A home that Tanae Gildea says everyone is deserving of, regardless of their past. No matter where I apply to live, they're going to tell me no because of what I did 10 years ago, said Gildea. Gildea served four years in prison for using meth. While it was her decision in the past, she says it shouldn't define her life. You know, I'm a law enforcement officer, okay? So I know more about sentencing and how much time people get in prison than the average person does. For using meth, you're not going to get four years in prison, okay? Not unless you had significant criminal history before that, and then, you know, they tacked, and the crime that you committed probably was selling meth. That's, four years in prison is pretty common for selling meth, but she's not going to mention that there. She wants to garner sympathy, and the people who wrote this article, they probably didn't look into it but probably for selling meth. But let me continue. Although she said getting past the housing criminal background check was a hurdle for her and her daughter, leaving them without a home of their own. How did that make you feel? I asked her daughter. Not really good. Not only people with money uh, and that haven't been to jail need a house. Everyone needs a house, said Laria Gildea. That's why Nation Outside, an organization advocating for those who are formerly incarcerated, rallied at the Capitol pushing that landlords perform background checks after an offer is made. House Bill 4878 ensures they're not being denied solely based on their criminal history. So this isn't a straight ban that they're looking for of landlords being able to do background checks. That, that's coming, believe me. This is the first step towards a ban because even if they uh, uh, force landlords to do background checks after they approve the tenant, that's not going to be good enough because still these people are going to be getting rejected. So what they want to do is ban outright landlords from being able to do background checks. Okay, that's that's what they 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 want that wouldn't pass right now, you know, probably. So that's why oh, we're going to slowly ease into it. You know, it's just we're going to slowly chip away at landlords' rights until they have none. That's what they've been trying to do for a very long time. And you know, you can look back just 10, 15 years ago and see how much things have changed, you know, as a lot more cities have implemented rental inspection programs and landlord registrations and uh, forced mandated inspections. And so many places have passed rent control that no, didn't have it before. Extremely strong rental protect or tenant protections. You know, it's just slowly everything is getting worse as time goes by. And People, they don't realize it when, you know, they're sitting there and they're like, hey, you know, things weren't like this before. Well, the people who've been in the game for long enough, like myself, we notice it. We notice that all of these things are changing and that things are slowly getting more socialist and, you know, less property rights for us landlords. <clears throat> A practice called blanket banning, which is unlawful. Tony Gant said, Nation Outside says, this continues to happen to those with a criminal background. Although we have a saying that if you do the crime, you do the time, that's true, 
But what the reality is, the people you see often are suffering from what we call perpetual punishment, said Gantt. If you do a criminal background check, that's based on who I was in 1986, not who I am in 2023, said Lewinda Hollister. I'm out here trying to do better because you want me to do better. Lewinda Hollister served 36 years in prison. She agrees that access to housing reduces crime, keeps communities safe, and increases the likelihood of finding a job. Gildea and Hollister now have a place to call home and a chance to give back to society. So, you know, they, they bring up this Lewinda Hollister person who did 36 years in prison. There's only a few crimes that you could have done that would you would get that much time in prison. So it was most likely homicide, okay? She most likely killed somebody. And now she is saying, oh, well, that was back in 1986. I shouldn't still be punished for that. Yeah, you're going to face consequences for the rest of your life. That is the way that decisions work. Whether you like it or not, you face consequences for your actions for the rest of your life. That is why, you know, we encourage people to make good decisions, to think about what they're doing and to try to, you know, keep to a minimum their negative, bad attitudes and their bad habits. OK, you hurt somebody, you kill somebody, you're going to face the consequences of that forever. OK, and I don't feel sorry for you. You were able to find housing. That doesn't mean, and keep in mind, that doesn't mean that you are not going to be able to find housing. It's going to be harder. For the rest of your life, it's going to be harder. But, you know, just like they can look in your background and employers can decide not to hire you, well, guess what? Landlords should be able to look at your background and decide not to rent to you. <clears throat> you know, the only person I really feel sorry for in this story is the daughter of... Um, the first lady they talked about, you know, who lives with her mom, because, you know, if you are a minor and your parent committed a crime, it, it just kind of sucks for you. OK, it sucks that, hey, your parent committed a crime. You live with your parent. and Now it's hard for you to have a decent place to live. So, you know, I, I feel bad for you, but that doesn't mean that just because I feel bad, I am going to break my rules and then rent to you and then still suffer the consequences because your mom didn't pay the rent or tore my place apart or, you know, whatever. OK, so, yeah, th this is a bad situation. Here's here's my suggestion. Right. You just deal with it. That That's the way it works. OK, you committed the crime. You know, you face the consequences.